this is Solar PVTV from World Future Energy Summit 2017 from Abu Dhabi. And after the long, long, long expo and also long evenings, uh, we are together with uh, Matthias Altieri, the CEO and founder of uh, Minerva Capital Group, and with uh, Michael Belmer, who is managing director for LTI RE Energy. But besides uh, these two functions uh, within the companies, organizations, they are also the leaders of Solar Business Club that actually yesterday we had the first uh, launching event. So hello guys, and uh, first thing, how did you survive this week? Good morning to everybody. Thomas, thank you for having uh, invited me. Yeah, good question. After a week of um, a lot of customers, a lot of interested people, and a lot of evening events, and also a very beautiful one you organized. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I met a lot of uh, interesting people, and I'm happy to be here. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Tomas. Um, for me, same thing. Uh, for it was incredible to see how this uh, yeah, fair is picking up and how the events are organized, not only on the fair, but also in parallel. So a lot of um, good um, business uh, contacts, uh, cooperation, um, discussions, and that's definitely something uh, what uh, the industry bring bring forward. So guys, uh, we had our first uh, small solar business club uh, meeting, and uh, what is your feedback? And how do you think that uh, our industry will work in the future? And how important is the relationship? We would say age to age, yes, so that we. Uh, let's say, invented uh, human-to-human -human relationship, how it is important for the so growing solar business in the future, not only on a global level, but especially here for the Middle East. So uh, let's start with Michael, because it was one of the persons who invented age to age Yeah, inventing is a little bit too much, but uh, what we mean by age to age is uh, human-to-human. We know all about B2C, B2B, but at the end of the day, we are talking about project business here and um, utility scale uh, very much. So very often, uh, yeah, nine digit uh, number of investments, more than 100 million uh, US dollar. So talking about these projects, obviously a lot of people are involved and we can learn from the experience uh, we have done in other countries that this is uh, mostly done more efficiently if the people are working closely to, together. So what we are trying to accomplish in Solar Business Club is uh, that we are getting people across the industry but also other shareholders, like uh, from politics, but also yeah, from the financing world, together and uh, in an intention to make uh, more stable project pipelines, to realize uh, quicker the project as necessary, and um, yeah, to influence uh, the industry in a way that uh, we can strive for the growth and realize the growth, what we are seeing in the markets. If you think about it, uh, how strong this industry has been growing during the last five years, and if you imagine how strong it will uh, increase in the next five years, uh, you have to think also about the, let's call it, transaction costs of uh, projects, which means that people are yeah, realizing at the end of the day. And we are very much believer that uh, it's essential for the industry getting the people uh, together, uh, not working always against each other, but uh, having common goals and accomplish together. So, Matthias, when we are thinking about uh, structuring the Solar Business Club, and especially to make like an interaction with the financial community. You were like a dreamed chairman for this job because uh, in the past you were running the business for one of the largest at that time, I think the largest uh, solar company for QSELS in Italy. And Italy was the largest market actually in the world. So you have, let's say, background from the solar business. Since a couple of years, you are founder of Minerva Capital Group. So you know uh, the business from both sides, and you are like a link, yes? And I would like to ask you, from your experience from the solar industry, but also uh, from your now daily job uh, with the financial community, how should we organize and structure everything? And uh, what will be the key factors to bring a real huge investors to the solar business? Thomas, a good question, difficult question, and it needs a longer time to really uh, reflect on that. However, you're right, coming from the industry part and uh, 
being one of the biggest, or no, the biggest EPC globally was Q cells at that time. Now it's Hanva Q cells. Um, now and also this giving this experience to a new company. I'm chief sales officer since a couple of weeks of a mounting system, which is one of the global leader in, in wrecking and tracking systems. Um, yeah, I'm now um, being in, involved in the financial world where in the, big, in the past it was the bottleneck where cells or silicon. Today it's not anymore the models which are not available anymore. Today it's hard to get financial um, services, to get um, financing uh, both on equity sides and debt sides. Um, what we are going to do in our um, business club is simply to bring together people. I think until now, industry do these big sh shows and fairs where you meet people, you interact, you, you, you can interface with your customers. But in the financial world, you don't have that. So you might meet at the lawyer when you do your due diligence or uh, you prepare a transaction, or you do that on the bank side but never on, on uh, such a visible side. So it's a little bit a secret world. However, in uh, Solar Business Club, um, I think we have a lot of good potential customers and uh, companies there. Um, myself, uh, my fund is based in Luxembourg. Uh, we have somebody on our team from South Africa, the lady from yesterday, New York based. So we try to get those people linked, connected, H to H, which again counts a lot and then we will make hopefully the right step to, to get more the, let's say, the institutional world to this um, business. So I have one question to the audience. One question to the audience. So you know that uh, in 2004, solar business was, in Europe, was one billion. And uh, how do you think, what is the size of the solar business today in the world? Who knows? in the audience. It was 1 billion and how much is today? It's 200 billion. So imagine during just a couple of years, the solar industry increased 200 times. And how do you think, uh, how big will be the yearly business in 2025? It will be 1 trillion yearly. So imagine how big exponential growth will uh, face and uh, why I mentioned that yes because you are CEOs of the companies so it's so difficult to you know reach you sometimes yes you are so busy but actually the real growth will only not happen now yes so you imagine you will be more and more busy so I believe that it's so important yes to have this solar business club for busy people yes and then you can rely on each other and uh, when you have when you want to speak with someone, it's something serious, yes? Could you comment on that? And how do you see this ex exponential growth and, you know, the importance of Solar Business Club and this sea level community? Um, first of all, I, I totally agree that we will face a real, this is the beginning. And I see a lot of, I'm happy to see a lot of young people. I see a lot of ladies interested in this business. And this brings really our, this is our future because um, until now the sun is still free of charge so and we have a lot of sun especially in this region coming to your to your question Thomas is um, how to um, better how, how, how can you how can you explain it better than getting closer to each other and and moving the world better in a better direction yeah, I think um, besides uh, the links, it's also a logic behind. I mean, uh, coming from a technical point of view at this point of time, and we as a company are doing uh, central inverters, uh, you are automatically involving a lot of technical components. And what you're doing, you do an integration with modules, with racks, uh, with some cabling. You have an EPC doing some engineering. You have a good company who is talking into it. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's a lot of effort, which can be uh, replicable. And that's what you are seeing uh, nowadays, uh, that uh, a lot of companies are forming up in loose or also tight corporations. And it makes a lot of sense because you want to realize those pro projects quicker. For the investment side, I think it's the same thing. You can more rely if you know a building block of different components already. 
So all this we are doing uh, for the purpose of uh, realizing, of course, more, getting transaction costs lo less, uh, doing less due diligence on the projects. Nowadays, everybody is doing a due diligence. Even we as component supplier are looking carefully at the projects, because sometimes you do not know what's going on with the projects. But it's uh, not very efficient, so to say. And I think for banking, it's also a nightmare that they have to work uh, in every region in a new uh, political system, new legislation system, new technical requirements. So you see a lot of um, lawyers and uh, technical advisors earning a lot of money in this uh, industry, which is good. But at the same time, it's delaying the process. So again, to your question, um, this is where we are trying, of course, uh, to link the people. And when linking to them, uh, there is an atmosphere of trust. So if I bring in a partner to a discussion, it's already my partner, and I give him some assessment, and uh, either it works, uh, then it's good. Of course, people would rely that my partners are working. And by this one, it comes, um, yeah, a networking effect. So uh, we are not doing it here in theory uh, to do something fancy and having nice events. We do it on a proposed and, yeah, pushing the industry quicker, getting transaction costs down. That's basically it. Michael, let me, let me add something which is very important, what you said, coming back to this H2H. I, I think what a little bit reflects on the question of Thomas is, I think our calls are taken if we from a certain sea level call each other. So we take the time because we know that he faces the same time issue like we. So people, and like you, Thomas, of course, um, and you should not travel so much. <laughs> no, but it's uh, seriously speaking. So when, when we call people and uh, people know each other and they trust each other, so our call will simply be taken. And uh, maybe the last question uh, with regards to H2H. To H but in relationship to the Middle East, yes, because we are here in the Middle East. And how would you compare uh, this kind of importance of the personal relationship in the region uh, to the other, uh, other markets? And uh, from your point of view, uh, what should be, you know, like a main factor to bring the most important people, decision makers, to our group? Yeah, again, Thomas, difficult question. I think... Um, uh, we are different in the world, so we are different in color, we're different in behavior. You said I'm German, I'm half German, half Italian, so grew up with a, a very emotional father, an Italian one, and a serious German mother, which yeah, kept the balance in between our emotions. And coming here, which um, I think this culture is a little bit closer to a uh, um, friendship, uh, the people want to know each other, they, they, they want to trust each other, and then business move. And this comes back to everything in life. And it starts in friendship, in your family, in your marriage. It's trust. And um, I think with this, you can bring also good um, yeah, peace to, to the project. OK, I would like to now ask uh, people from the audience. Because you are coming from different countries. And uh, who is from Africa? Who is from Africa? Which country? Kenya. I was in Kenya a month ago, month and a half ago, and I have to say that I was so surprised. It was my first time in Africa, before I was only in Egypt. Kenya is such a beautiful country, first. Second, there is so a lot of intelligent young people, really top of the top. But I would like to, and also, you know, people are so kind. But I would like to ask you, from your point of view, you are the businessman, of course, yes? Ah, government. Oh, even governments. And uh, how do you think uh, the, the relationship between people, how important it is, the trust between people in Kenya? Uh, especially the young people. Uh, uh, in our community, unlike Europe and America, uh, our, our, our population is an, in a triangle. Uh, people who are 50 plus, like myself, we are less than 5% of the population. But the young people, this is as people below 20 years more than 40 percent in my country so the future is really the young people and the young people have less barriers than our generation because the young people with ICT they are more connected than our generation so the future is uh, breaking barriers and people interacting much more than our generation has been and building the trust they have talked about because without trust and it starts with the family if you have strong families and then you have communities which have fewer barriers between each other, 
Then uh, the next thing is to inter interact and relate and hopefully build a common future which will be well for everybody. Yeah, I wanted to pick it up uh, what we just accomplished here. I mean, uh, Tomas uh, involved a couple of people from different countries and uh, that's basically what we are doing in Solar Business Club. Talking about me personally, we discussed yesterday project in Kenya with our Kenyan partners. We had a lunch uh, with Saudis for our localization in Saudi and I'm here with a big Nigerian group uh, for projects in Nigeria. So I think uh, the common thing back to this question is uh, definitely trust. And in each and every country it's like this and relationships are built on trust. And uh, the other thing of course of this fair is uh, to get the interaction. And yeah, my last statement, I think uh, we have come a good way also with the uh, Solar and Clean Tech Influencers Forum before. And um, yeah, uh, Solar Club is definitely one way of uh, intensifying these discussions. And I would like to finish uh, this discussion with thanks to Michael and Matthias for trust, yes, because this is the fundament of uh, the Solar Business Club. So thank you so much. That was Solar TV TV from World Future Energy Summit uh, here in Abu Dhabi 2017. And the last thing, uh, the family photo with the audience. We have uh, with us one guy who is already on the first family photo.